<laughs> Acts chapter 5. Some of you might be familiar with this story. I know the first time I read this scared the heck out of me. Let's start at verse 1. Everybody with me? Let me say amen. 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 5 chapter verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias went so far his wife sold all the possessions. Stop there. Previously, the Christians that came together, and even Barnabas had finally came to be a Christian. And Barnabas was a rich man. He sold everything and gave it to the church. So the rule came down that everybody sell everything because we're going to all be on one accord. Ain't nobody rich. Ain't nobody poor. We're going to sell everything we own, and we're going to give it to the church, and we're going to split it. That everybody be equal in unity. We can't get that today for some reason. You know, it all goes to the preacher. But, but everybody will be equal in unity. So this couple, Ananias and Sapphira, they were rich. They were rich. But watch what they do. And their hearts was really right. You know, because they wanted to sell everything and give it away. Amen. Amen. Verse 2. And kept back part of the price. See, they sold and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, meaning she being in agreement with it. Because there's power in agreement, people. Amen. There's just as much power in the negative agreement as there is positive agreement. I can touch and agree with you negatively and have power. And I can touch with you, agree with you positively and have power. But in married couples, if y'all don't agree, you can't pray. They don't like that one. But thank God you're single. But if you marry and your husband believes, and I just use this example. If your husband believes it for 100 and you believe it for 50, that prayer goes up the noise to God. And watch this. Even if you are married and y'all have an argument, don't come together real quick and get that thing solved, neither one of you can pray. <laughs> you just praying to yourself. It says your prayers are hindered until y'all come back to agreement. That's why being single sometimes is better than being married. But you got to be able to keep your flesh. That's why he said also if you burn, go get married. You know what that burn means. Amen. Amen. Again, let's read verse 2. And kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? To lie to the who? Holy Ghost. Come on, y'all. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Was it, now all he's saying to him right here in verse 4, wasn't it yours? He said, was it, was it remain, was it not thine own, and after was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in where? Your heart. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto who? God. God. I tell you, watch what you say. Watch what you say. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. That means he dropped dead. Hello? He dropped dead and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Now you see why they buried people outside the church. But they buried him. Make you 
tremble. Hello. God, don't kill me. Oh, yeah, louder than the Holy Ghost. See what happened. Amen. <laughs> Verse 10 again. Then she fell down straight away in the street and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by the great mile husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Amen? Amen. So great fear came upon the church and many as heard the things. Now, God tests the loyalty or disloyalty of persons. God tests the loyalty or disloyalty of a person. Amen? Well, we see the word tempt or temp temptation or tempted, but he's testing your disloyalty or your loyalty to him. Are you going to be loyal to your girl more than me? Are you going to be loyal to your children more than me? Or are you going to be loyal to that man more than me? Women? Women, that man ain't serving God, he ain't the man. The same way any man is treating you is the same way he treats God. And then vice versa. The same way that woman treating you, if it's disrespect, she disrespects God. Vice versa. That's how you can tell whether they messed up with you. Amen? Because if they treat God terrible, I mean, if they treat you terrible, they treat God terrible. That's the same way they respect God. That man should be getting up on the word. That man should be getting up praying. He should be leading you in prayer. Amen. And if you don't want to pray, then just say, okay, I'm going to pray for you. But God already spoke to him and said, go pray for that woman and you better ask her. Believe me, I know I tried to do it without my wife. It don't work. No, it don't work. It becomes a selfish prayer. Amen. Oh, Nick, sir, I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and pray anyway. God, do that. No, get up and go ask that woman to pray. God, no, I don't want to pray for her. Then I ain't listening to you. Amen. Now I go in there, honey, you want to pray? Now nah, I don't feel like it tonight. Yeah. All right, God, I'm going to get back on in there But then in my prayer, I go back in there, she come. Baby, I'm sorry, that's such an agree. All they do is hit my knee. God turned her head. And the same thing with women. You can turn that man's head to pray to God. You don't want to pray with me like that? No. Well, God, he don't want to pray. Go in there and ask him one more time. You want to pray? Then all of a sudden, you need Man, I'm wrong. All right, baby, I'll pray. Hey, hey, hey. He's it. That's not you turning his head, that's God turning his head because of your obedience. Amen? Amen? That was a sidetrack. But let's go and see what God tests us. The Lord to you this way. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Boy, y'all just don't know this thing is ministering to me. Amen. This is where I saw some things that I said. Well, this is where people may get confused about the contradictions of God. Amen. How they use that word to contradict. Amen. Now, watch what it says here. Looking at verses 1 to 2. And it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. See that? Now, it said before God tempts no man, right? But God did tempt who? Abraham. And said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for the poor burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So he's testing his obedience. And actually, if you really look at that, that's a topology, is what we call it in theology. Topology, or type of, of, of image that was going leading up to the God sacrificing his only begotten son. So if Abraham was faithful to sacrifice his son, God said, I'm going to be faithful to sacrifice mine. So that's where you get the topology, okay? So that's why he stopped them, and make long story short, he stopped them, and there was in the bush a ram. So God provided that ram a sacrifice, but he wanted to see if he was willing enough to give up what he loved the most. Are you willing to give up what you love the most? They have been believing that son for I don't know how long. They were nine or seven years old. Him and Sarah were believing it. He was Sarah doubted for a while, and she gave him Hagar. Go have a baby with this one, because I don't think God will let me have a baby. But she wound up having that baby. Then God said, now you waited all these years, now kill him and give him a baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God, yeah, kill him and give him a baby. And then when his faithfulness showed up that he was willing to do it, God provided a way of escape. Ain't that what we started out with? Here's a way of escape. So as soon as you say yes, Lord, he'll give you another way of escape. Hello. Hello. Let's go to um, James chapter 1. And you see the controversy between those two. Now, it just said, God tempted Abraham. Ain't that what it said? Now watch this in James 1. Verses 13 to 15, it said, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted 
said of God. Now, don't that sound contradictory? How many of y'all think that's contradiction? Because I used to get those arguments. But when you look up that word, it says test. Test. King James says test. Okay? But God does test to prove you. Your disloyalty or loyalty. But here it is. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Amen. Neither tempted he any man. Now watch this. Keep it in context. Watch this. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own love. Say it again. Lust. lust. He's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. What was one of the means for temptation? Being enticed to do evil. So then God tempted you. You were tempted by your own lust and enticed with evil. Amen. Verse 15. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth what? Sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth what? Death. Oh, but God, it was you all along. It was you all along. You know? We all are enticed by certain evils. Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody in this room so big and proud that they ain't enticed with something. Amen. Some are little enticed, as we call them, little enticed, because I've been, I've been enticed by every single one of the things that y'all struggle with today. That's why I can relate. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm an excuse maker. I made up every excuse. But I had to finally make up my mind, I don't want to live like this man. When you go away, I just don't want to live like this man. I know it's got to be something better than this. I know my life was not made for this, especially in the last half of my life. And all I got left is what? I promised 70 years. And here it is. I'm 53 this week, this month. I'll be 53 this month. And I got 17 years that God promised me because he only promised you 70. But all my friends are dying at 40, 50. You know, even some are in that. Because anything after 70 is a blessing. Right. So I got 17 years to fulfill what God told me to fulfill. Or if you won't bless me more, but I will be with him. But I, in my mind, there's no man in my family that would live past, past 60, basically, because of prostate cancer. But guess what? I'm living that battle. The prostate's acting up, but guess what? They ain't going to be cancerous. You know? That's just age to me. But I'm not going to entice it with no more fat. I'm not going to entice it with no more alcohol. I'm not going to entice it with no more women. You know? Do my mind go there? I'm human. It sure does. Y'all yeah, ain't got to use that. Yeah. I think about it just like you every day. I just make a choice to not do it. And then when it gets too heavy, guess what I do? I pray. Or I call a good friend and say, guess what I thought about doing today? Can you help me? And that got to be a friend that ain't going to judge you. Amen. You know? Oh, man, you're a man of God. You're supposed to know better than that. Ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm a man of God. I am doing the right thing. I'm calling you as my friend to talk to me, pray with me, and minister to me. Amen. Just like my friend Willie did today. Amen? Amen. 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 But some of y'all can't receive it because y'all think that person's judging you. Amen. You don't see the love in what they're saying. Amen. Don't do it. You. I'm here for you. Right. You're killing yourself. And in killing you, you're killing me. Amen. I love you. Stop. Amen. And you can't judge me. No. Well, I'll just pray for you and turn you over to the Lord. Amen. 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 Go to Hebrews 11. The faith chapter. You say 11. Yeah, Hebrews 11. Uh, this thing is really moving here. Hebrews 11. Now we're going to look at what it said right there. Now we said that God, we said that God tempted no man with evil. And we saw that the evil was conceived through your own lust and enticed you. But he did tempt or try or test Abraham by his faithfulness. Because if Abraham hadn't done what he'd done, God did not have sacrificed his only begotten son. But I'm pretty sure he'd have found somebody else who was faithful enough to do it. Because the Bible says Abraham was the most faithful man who ever walked the earth. Amen? But verse 17, Hebrews 11, 17 says this. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, now you see the word tried, tempted, he was tried, offered up Isaac, see? And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. So God was going to, I mean, Abraham was going to offer up the promise, which was his son, back to God. And God said, since you were going to do that, I'm going to give you my son to you. So that I will be saved. Amen. Amen. 
Or some of y'all know he grabbed this. So therefore, go back to 1 Corinthians 10. So therefore, let's look at that again. 1 Corinthians 10. Y'all need to really pray that one, 1 Corinthians 10. Because it blessed me. Because you need to understand that God is going to do that. Why he's going to do that. Amen? 10.13 Amen. again says what? There has no temptation taken you, but such as what? Common to man. That means everybody gets tempted the same way. Amen. It's common. <laughs> Male, female. Common to man. Right? But God is what? Faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above you are able. So I'm not going to give you nothing you can't handle. If I'm tempting you, I already know your heart. I already know you can handle it. So go do it. Go do it. Don't bother me again. No, you lazy. You need to go ahead and go do it so you can get blessed. Because if God tempted you, he got a blessing for you when you succeed. Y'all got me on that. When I suffer you to be above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a what? A way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Are you going to believe God's word or the situation that's in front of you? He made the way of escape. He says, go ahead. Go ahead. You can handle it. You can handle it. Now bear it. Bear it. Now as soon as you get to the fork in the road, there's the escape. But you got to be willing to go to the fork in the road. You got to be willing to go to that fork that says, I'm not going to fornicate. Here I am at the fork in the road. There's the crack road. There's the fornicate road. There's the alcohol road. There's the sin road. God said, now what road you going to take? Here's your escape. I'm going to Oh, no. Is it easy? No. 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 I'm not lying to you. Because no. down that other road might be money, sex, every desire you want according to your flesh. But then when I thought about it, it was only momentary. But when I chose the other road, it was hard. It was rocky. It, it put me through headaches. It put me through anxiety. It put me through anger. But when I got to the end of the road, it was the love of God. You know, I'm going to go sling some drugs. I'm going to do this. I'm going to sling some women. The next thing you know, it's joyous for a moment. But guess what happened? Jail, prison, or death. Or death. OD, whatever. It was fun for a moment. You know? But death was at the end of it. Amen? Woo, that was good. Go back to 1 Peter. We get right down there. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 verse 6. Now go to verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith of the salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season. If need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. But see, watch that. What is the heaviness? That heaviness is in sorrow. You are now what? In sorrow through manifold temptation. Don't be so sorrowful because you're going through those type of temptations. Why? What did it say in verse 5? Who are kept by the power of who? God through faith unto salvation. Ready to reveal in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice through, through now for a season. So everything comes to season. So one day you have a season of blessing. But behind every blessing comes a trial. Then if you go through the trial, you have another blessing. Then you go through that trial. Then blessing, trial, blessing. But guess through that, you begin to grow in God and mature in God. Because once you get through that blessing and trial, that if it comes again, it ain't as strong as it was before. It's weak now. But if you always stuck on the same trial and never went through it completely, you're going to go around it and around it and around it until you get successful. <coughs> but some people never complete it. They wind up dead. But God long suffers with that. Amen? Amen. But every time you make it through a trial, 
There's a blessing at the end. Then that same old might have tried to come your way again. It ain't strong, people. That's how God strengthens you and matures you. You can be there. Believe me. You can. You just got to make up your mind. But I love her. I love it. I know I've never been like this before. Of course not. That's why he says you're a new creature. Amen. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Mm -hmm. But in order to become new, you have to want it. You have to want to go through it. Do you want to change life? Or do you want to remain the same? Because the only thing that remains the same in this earth and in the universe is God. Amen. It says in scripture, he's the same yesterday, today, wow. and forevermore. Wow. So that means you being a human must be willing to change. Change people, change people. Amen. Amen. You can't change nobody. You got to change yourself. Amen. And when they see you changing yourself, then they will change. And if they don't change, it don't matter. You'll leave them behind. Amen. Amen. Because it means some folks you just have to cut off. If you expect to change and get better, and the person you're connected to wants to remain the same, you got I have success in my heart. Amen. But you seem to still want to do the same thing. You talk a good game, but there is no action in your game. Amen. You're not the way to go. That's a weak man. A weak man who can't fight. Amen? Amen. You talk it, but you ain't showing it. Amen. I'll do it next week. No, you ain't. I heard that five years ago. Don't even tell me you're going to do it no more. Just go do it. Just go do it. Amen. And give God the glory. All right, a couple more verses. James, go to James, chapter <coughs> James chapter 1. I knew this message wasn't going to come across all that great, but I don't, it's not about me being great. It's not about the message being great. It's about what God wants to do in your life, man. You know, there's a whole lot of things I left out of here, and a whole lot of things I curved my tongue with, too. You know, because I've been praying about this. Because there ain't nobody in this room who ain't going through some temptation. You, know, you can't be in a homeless uh, condition and don't have temptation. You can't be in a state of unemployment and have no temptation. Because, you know, your mind begins to think, well, you know, I'm going to get paid. Matter of fact, I'm going to take a chance. Matter of fact, you get to the place where they're going to kill you. That's why I used to love Ryan's story when he said he got to the place he didn't care what they would do to him. I'm going to steal the people's Christmas lights off their lawn. And I'm, matter of fact, going to go in the hood and beat up the drug dealer in hopes that they would shoot me. See? He gave up. But God wouldn't let him give up. Amen. But that because the devil is persistent. Be persistent about this too. Let the devil know you ain't giving up. You can tell me, but I ain't giving up. James 1, verse 12. What does it say? Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, tested, or proved, Of life. Mm. So that's of course it's going to be about. Because Jesus is going to give you some crowns that when you get to heaven, you're going to be able to lay at his feet. If you were, I heard one brother tell me once, he just want to make it in. I want to just make it. It's good that I make it, but I want to be able to lay some beautiful crowns at my God's feet. Amen. 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 I really do. You know, the only ones that should make it in like that is, you know, serial killers who are in the electric chair and they call on Jesus and they just made it in. But if you've been walking this earth and haven't been doing nothing, and haven't even got locked up, you need to know that's the blessing of God. Sure. You know, it took me 40 something years before I finally went to jail and in prison and all that. But my first boy, God covered me. But it seems strange that the moment I get born again, then I go to jail. But while I was a sinner, I couldn't get caught. It seemed like I got away with murder. You know? It scared me half to death. See, you know, maybe it didn't scare you, but it scared me. But the strange thing is, the first time it scared me, but next thing I know, I was getting locked up more and I would begin to get used to it. I said, now that is scaring me because I'm getting used to going to jail. Something's wrong. 